So there's this weird phenomenon that happens every year. And even though the high holidays are so late this year, it still happens in which as soon as we start to get into this crazy season of preparing for the high holidays and we're like in the middle of amazing registration and all of the programs that are gonna happen. And then also at the same time, everybody that has ever wanted to get married in the year 2024 would like to get married right now, which for clergy is so fun because obviously we wanna celebrate everybody's weddings and it's such a delight. Um, and I am going to go ahead and assume that it's because there is auspicious meaning to getting married in the month of Elul, which is this month, the month before Rosh Hashanah, our new year, and not because September has really nice weather in Colorado. And so that's obviously the time when everybody wants to get married. Either way, it could be both. I don't know. But it's this actually really cool thing because Elul, that month that precedes the high holidays, is in fact supposed to be in Jewish tradition an extra lucky time for getting married, an extra special time for getting married. And not just because you're coming up on the new year and you get to celebrate all kinds of high holidays and then immediately upon getting married, start repenting. It has nothing to do with that. It's because the word Elul, which is the Hebrew name of that month, is spelled with four letters, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed, Elul. And there's a tradition that that's an acronym for a very famous verse that shows up all the time at Jewish weddings, Ani, Lidodi, Vidodi, Li, which starts with Aleph, Lamed, Vav and Lamed. Anila Dodi Vidodi Li means I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. We print it on wedding invitations. It's all over Jewish wedding contracts. It is this huge part of Jewish wedding culture is this phrase. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. And in fact, it's even what we use most often as a vow in Jewish weddings. We say that to our partner with the hope that, right, that means something, that I am yours and you are mine. It's this sense of mutual responsibility. And it's not just, I'm yours, best of luck. And it's not, you're mine, oy vey, right? There's, which you could, maybe a little bit of those because you know, you never know what you're getting into. but. Uh, Really, it's, it's actually this sense of, of really like my truth and your truth, my life and your life are now inextricably linked. I am yours and you are mine. And so it means something a little extra in this month, even as we are ramping up and racing toward these holidays that we can't wait to celebrate. So what does that have to do with our theme for Elul week two? If you read your email, like uh, good community members this morning, you saw that there was email from me for Elul week two. And sometimes we work from inside out and we start with our spiritual selves. We move to physical, then interpersonal, and then all the way out to our communal selves as we examine how we have showed up in this last year. This year, we're going the other way. We started with communal. Rabbi Black spoke to us beautifully last week where we really actually needed it last week so much to talk about what it means to be a part of this community, to be a part of the world, our collective communal selves. This week, we narrow just a little bit into our interpersonal selves. So not how do I relate to all of you, but how do we each relate to each other one-to-one, -one, person to person, individual to individual? And there's this verse in this week's Torah portion, which is Kitetse, it's in Deuteronomy. We've got somewhere between 72 and 74 laws that are given in this Torah portion, depending on who you ask. And um, here's the rule that jumped out for me. It said, 
if you see your neighbor's ox or sheep gone astray, immediately relevant for all of us, if you see your neighbor's ox or sheep gone astray, do not ignore it. You must take it back to your friend. And if that friend does not live near you, or perhaps you don't know who the owner of that ox or sheep is, you're going to bring that ox home with you, and it's going to remain with you until that person claims it. And then you're going to give it back. You will do the same with that person's donkey. I don't know why a donkey would be different than a sheep or an ox, but whatever, we lay out the donkey separately. You're going to do it s- the same thing with the person's donkey. You do the same thing with that person's garment. You do the same thing with anything that your neighbor or your friend loses and you find. And this section ends with the following phrase, you shall not remain indifferent. You shall not remain indifferent. This is logical, right? This is actually just sort of human interaction 101. If, If it belongs to someone else, clothing, donkey, whatever it is, and the item is theirs, even if it's temporarily lost or lost, they lose track of it, you must not remain indifferent. So much so that it's not even just about returning it, you also have to care for it. If they have lost something and they can't find it, but you can and you can't find them to give it back, you have to take care of the thing that is lost. Now, it might seem This phrase, that you shall not remain indifferent, it might seem like actually that's a phrase that is better suited for last week, for our communal week of Elul. When we think about the world at large, that this idea, don't be indifferent, right? We talk about that when we think about the world that's bigger than us, because it's so easy to turn inward and ignore the suffering of other people people, of other groups, of other countries, of other realities. And sometimes we get tunnel vision. But actually, this section in the Torah, which we call Hashavat Aveda, the return of lost objects, the return of property, that is never actually about all of us. Me finding what's yours and giving it back to to you, that's about a person-to-person interaction. It's not about community. You lost it, and you needed it, and I brought it back to you. It's about being tied up and tied in with another person. Your fate is tied up with my fate. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. It's not just that phrase, Anila Dodi Vidodi Li, perhaps about brides and grooms and weddings and marriage. It's actually about how we interact with each of these individuals around us, that you are mine and I am yours and our stories and our lives and our faiths are inextricably linked with each other. We're responsible for one another. And here's where it really, I think, shows up for me this year. This instruction not to be indifferent because we're tied together is that that applies all the time. We're not allowed to ignore what's happening to those closest to us, even if we're tired. And even if we're overwhelmed or overstimulated or overburdened. And I can't help but think that this year has been, it's been a hard year for our community. And it's a hard world out there. And even though we have these moments of great joy, we also have this layer of uncertainty that follows us every And there have been moments when I feel so tired. I feel emotionally full. 
It happens to all of us. It has happened a lot this year. The sadness that we hold is big. Sometimes I even feel more than just tired or full. I feel then a little numb and a little disconnected and unable, I think, sometimes to find the humanity in others, especially those who are different than me. Except our tradition reminds us that even in our hardest moments, we have to pay attention to our friends and our families and our neighbors and our colleagues and the people that we interact with one-on-one. -on -one. We are not allowed to remain indifferent because I am yours and you are mine. And our stories are bound up with each other no matter how tired we are or full we are. And so I think that this idea of Elul, of this month leading up to the high holidays, this reminder that I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine, that we are stuck with each other, regardless of what we have left in the tank, is maybe actually what fills the tank. It's what reminds us what we're doing. What's the point of all of this? And the purpose of all of this is not to walk through life alone because what happens when I lose my donkey or my clothes or my sheep or my ox or whatever property? I know that somebody is out there looking out for me, going to find my donkey, bring it back because I'm yours and you're mine. And so this second week of Elul, this examination of our interpersonal selves, I invite you to think about all of those people with whom you are tied up. All of those people who, whether you asked for it or not, are yours and you are theirs. The people we work with, the people we live with or live near, the people that we interact with the most. What is it? that they might be missing that you can help find? And what is it that you seek this year that perhaps they might know a little bit where it is? Because the things that are lost right now are probably a lot less donkey or sweater or sheep or ox and a lot more a sense of peace, a sense of purpose, a sense of perspective, or maybe even a little bit of hope. And I'll tell you what, I have hope to share. And I'm guessing when we all come together and sit like this, you might have what to share with me too. And then we aren't so much looking for what's lost. We're finding it together. And in Elul, in the ramp up to this new year, in the moments of knowing that there is perhaps a point to all of this and to look inside and see what we have brought and what else we can bring, what we have done and what else we can do, we know that there are things that have been lost that we can find and return. We have a unique capacity to help our loved ones locate what they are missing. And even if we can't, at least we're not always looking on our own. And so I invite you to check out the seven questions as we always do, one for each day of the week that came along with that email. As we think about our relationships interpersonally, as we think about how we have showed up, how we have taken care, how we have shown our appreciation, how we have given our attention, our patience, and our love. And I have a blessing for all of us in this second week of Elul that each of us and all of us help us find that which we have lost over this past year, that this week of Elul bring us a little less indifference and that together we know that we can find great meaning. And in order to acknowledge some of the togetherness and the meaning and the purpose 
that we have in store for us as we work our way through Elul. I'm going to invite up our colleagues, my colleagues, because we have yet another amazing start happening this weekend, in addition to the second week of Elul. Yasher Kochech. In the spirit of not only blessing and starting, but also learning what it means to take care of one another in interpersonal relationship and maybe even growing our social emotional skills, it is my honor to call up all of the religious school students who are here this evening. Come on up right in front over here. I can indeed see you. Get up here, all of you. We begin religious school on Sunday. There will be hundreds, literally hundreds of, ex look at that, see people who are excited to see each other. I gather right over here, smush together. Hundreds of people who are excited to see each other and learn with each other. And so, in honor of this moment, we are going to give you all a blessing. I'm going to invite our religious school team who is standing right outside the tent to come on over here and be a part of the blessing. If there are religious school teachers in our congregation this evening, I am going to invite you to come and stand with us. If there are religious school madrichim, our TAs, I invite you to come and stand with us as we offer you this blessing. We say, Eloheinu v'eloheo v'otenu v'imotenu, our eternal, our God. We ask your blessing for these students who are now embarking on what we pray will be a time marked by fulfillment and growth. As you all begin this year of learning, we hope that you will gain a greater sense of the words of our people and will come to embrace the traditions and values of our Jewish community. May you all learn from both the challenges and the rewards of your journey. May you overcome all obstacles, cherish all blessings, and form deep and lasting friendships. May you find a connection to our Jewish past Help us imagine a strong and exciting Jewish future and find holiness and happiness in special Jewish moments just like this one. And so we say. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shecheanu Kimanu vehidianu lasman hazeh baruch ata baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shecheanu vekimanu vehidianu lasman First day of religious school. We can't wait to see you on Sunday. You can go ahead and go back to your seats. <laughs> 